Hi everyone, my name is Erdem Varol. I'm a postdoc at Columbia Zuckerman Institute. And today I'll be talking about a computational approach linking neuron specific gene expression with connectivity. So we start by asking which genes determine synaptic connectivity. And we can afford to ask this question because we know that the proximity of neurons to each other is necessary, but not sufficient, since only a fraction of neurons that are touching end up forming synapses. Therefore, synapses must be specifically placed where they are, and hence they must be genetically encoded. Our goal is to build a model to decipher the genetic codes that determine such connectivity. To decipher the synaptic codes, we build a key and lock model of connectivity. In this model, we say that there exists a code of complementary matchmaking molecules expressed on opposing neurons. And to picture this premise, let's use a simple three gene scenario and show how simple rules can use to emerge complex nervous system wirings. Uh, so given that the co-expression of gene one and gene two in a, is, is the key and log code of connectivity, these two neurons that respectively express these two genes, gene one and gene two, are highly likely to form a connection given that they're in contact with one another. If two neurons do express the required matchmaking molecules, so gene one and gene two, but are not in contact with one another, then obviously a synapse cannot form. In contrast, suppose we have two neurons in close contact, but either part of the key and log code is not satisfied, then these two neurons will not be able to connect with each other. So simple connectivity rules like these between pairs of neurons can be applied, applied to larger groups of neurons to establish subnetworks that share the same connectivity code. And different connectivity codes can model the encoding of the entire nervous system as a superposition of simple subnetworks at each, that each connectivity code encodes. And this is, this is in Similar, similar to the idea of these multiplex connectomes that have been recently published in the, in the worm literature. So to decipher the molecular codes of the connectome in a large scale unbiased manner, we need single cell resolution connectivity and gene expression data. So for this, we utilize the Sanjan Gene Expression Atlas and the recently curated whole animal connectomes using electron microscopy. A workshop on the Sanjan Gene Expression Atlas will be held this afternoon, and I'd like you to forward, forward you all to that workshop for further details on how the sequencing was done. So given these two rich data sets of gene expression and connectivity, we have developed a computational tool that we call Network Differential Gene Co-Expression Analysis to decode the genetic, genetic correlates of connectivity. In broad strokes, this method aims to measure the co-expression of genes in pre- and post-synaptic terminals in connected neurons and contrast this with gene co-expression in unconnected neurons with membrane contact only. So this method involves four steps and I'll walk you through them. First, we focus on neural partners that share synaptic connections. We tabulate the gene expression in all presynaptic terminals for all synapses. Note that in this example, there are five neurons but seven synapses. So we list seven presynaptic gene expressions sometimes counting the same neuron multiple times to account for all the times it is presynaptic to other neurons. For example, this neuron is presynaptic to four other neurons. So we list this gene expression four times. Next, we list the gene expression in all the corresponding postsynaptic terminals. And given the pairs, on, given the pairs of pre and postsynaptic gene expression values, we tabulate a so-called gene co-expression table that keeps count of the number of times a gene that is expressed in presynaptic neurons co-occurs with genes that are expressed in postsynaptic neurons. So for example, uh, gene one in the presynaptic neuron is paired with gene two in the postsynaptic neuron. And, and then thus we add single counts of the corresponding cells in the co-expression table. And then same, similarly, gene one is also co-occurs with gene two Gene one in the presynaptic neuron co-occurs with gene two in the postsynaptic neuron. So we add, we add a count to the cell that corresponds to gene one crossed with gene two. We do this for all the, all the genes and all the synapses that we have in, in, the, in, our, in our lists until we fill this table. Finally, this table gives an idea of which gene combinations tend to be enriched in synapses. Next, we focus on the negative control of neural partners that have membrane contact but have not formed synapses with each other. Similarly, we again tabulate a gene co-expression table for genes that occur in non-synaptic membrane contacting partners. 
So note that uh, membrane contact symmetric. So we count the terminals of each membrane contact twice in our tabulation. This table ultimately gives us an idea of which genes tend to be enriched when there's membrane contact. So once we have these two tables, taking their difference, taking their difference of them gives us the differential gene co-expression table, which informs us on which genes are specifically enriched in synaptic connections versus the negative controls of membrane contact only. So going back to the beginning of this talk, taking this difference is very crucial because we know that all synapses require membrane contact. And, there, and therefore we must remove the effects of genes that mediate membrane contact to be left with a code that determines synaptic connectivity specifically. So after we have this code, we estimate its significance by randomly but delicately rewiring the connect home such that it, it, it satisfies some biologically plausible topologies. And this tabulation gives us, uh, enables us to estimate the variance of our codes and control for false discovery rates. Because after we do this rewiring, we, reg we regenerate these gene co-expression tables to see how they will look like under random networks. And once we have this, once we can estimate the variance, then we can, we can, we can determine which, which codes, which co-expressions are significantly expressed in synaptic connections. And details on this randomization procedure, which is very important, by the way, is going to be is found in the preprint and in the upcoming paper. Uh, now that we established the computational tool to link gene expression connectivity, we apply it to study the role of homeo domain transcription factors as terminal selectors for circuit organization. So for this, we utilize the, the nerve ring connectome of 84 neuron classes and the expression of 78 homeobox transcription factors that were captured by the Sanjan data set. Running this analysis yields 10 transcription factor targets that survive false discovery rate. And given these transcription factor targets that are significant in mission synaptic connections, we focus on the one that has the highest log fold change. And this is the transcription factor on 42. So examining ON42 closer shows that ON42 expressing neurons form a highly interconnected subcircuit that involves motor neurons, sensory neurons, and interneurons. So on the left-hand side, this is the graph, graph theory-based representation of this network, where the synapses are shown in the dark squares and the membrane contacts are shown in the light squares. And the right-hand side, you see the more intuitive network diagram of how these neurons are connected to one another. To experimentally validate the role of unc in connectivity, mutant experiments is done by Oliver Horbert's lab, and it shows that the unc mutants have significantly reduced number of synapses in several of the neurons in the unc subcircuit. And these are neurons such as SAA, AVA, and ABB. And note that the membrane contact numbers in these, in these mutants are maintained, while the synapses have been significantly reduced. And this further confirms the role that UNC42 plays in synaptic specificity rather than membrane contact guidance. In other words, mutating UNC42 does not alter membrane contacts, but it does, it does reduce the number of synapses for a subset of neurons. And additionally, UNC42 mutations are shown to reduce the expression of several downstream genes, including those responsible for cell adhesion. So on the left-hand side, we see the UNC42 subnetwork and the colors indicating the expression of these 11 cell adhesion molecules on each of those neurons in the subnetwork. On the right-hand side, we see the cell adhesion molecule expression in the mutants and see that most of these molecules have stopped expressing. As you see, these green colors and the blue colors and the yellow colors are no longer as present in the mutant gene expression. This finding highly suggests that these particular cell adhesion molecules play an important role in synaptic organization. To further explore the role of cell adhesion molecules in specifying connectivity, we apply our computational tool to study the molecular codes determining the connectivity of individual neurons in the nerve ring, and not just the ones that are positive for NC42. So for this analysis, we use the membrane contact data from that, that was recently curated by Christopher Britton, as well as Moyle et al. And in broad strokes, we show that synaptic connectivity and nerve ring strata organization do not share the same molecular codes. And our basic, the basic takeaway from this is that synaptic connectivity and layering of the, of the nerve ring may be encoded by different molecular mechanisms. 
Further details on this analysis will be presented in the afternoon workshop where we present uh, different use case scenarios of the Sanjan data set. And I invite you all there as a way to hear, hear further details about this, this analysis. So in summary, as part of the Sanjan project, we have introduced a new computational tool to decode the genetic base of connectivity. And this tool enables generating a wide range of biological hypotheses that can be easily falsified through simple experimentation, such as doing mutation experiments. So one such hypothetical target that we found, Uncore 2, is indeed shown to be causally implicated in connectivity, where, because experiments that sh show that Uncore 2 mutants display defects in forming synaptic connections. So with the introduction of newer and uh, newer transcriptional and connectivity data sets that can capture developmental stages of the worm, for example. As a next step, our goal is to study the temporal effects of gene expression and determining wiring events through development and maturation. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank all of my collaborators within the Sanjan project, uh, especially Seth Taylor, who led the, led the efforts in generating the single cell gene expression atlas. And, and, the, and, the, and the PIs, Oliver Holbert, David Miller, and Mark Hammerland. And I'd like to also thank my computational mentors at the Zuckerman Institute of Columbia, Liam Paninsky and Ashok Bitwin Kumar, and acknowledge our funding sources. Um, here's the, the QR codes for both the Sanjan Project website and, uh, and the open source software for for, for our computational tool, which we hope will enable other groups to generate other testable hypotheses about other molecular codes, about all, all different types of connectivity that they're interested in. And once again, here's the info about the Sanjan workshop this afternoon, where we can provide further details about how the sequencing was done, as well as I will provide a tutorial on how to use the NDGE software for your own applications. As one, one, one use case scenario will be showing how we can decode the cell adhesion molecule codes of ner nerving organization and connectivity. With that, I'd like to thank everyone and be open for questions.